Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So guys, I'm just approaching eight weeks post-op from my CMC, my thumb surgery. I had the suspension plasty and tendon transfer, which is basically where they take out one bone and make you a new joint by transferring a piece of tendon from the forearm, co coiling it up and making a little pillow. So they take out a bone, they replace it with a pillow and you have a whole new joint there where the thumb meets the wrist. This was the second time for me since I did my left side uh, about a year ago. So my right was just about two months ago. Yeah, this is my right, regardless of what it looks like on camera. So I'm gonna tell you how I'm doing with that. I'm gonna tell you a few tips about what's really worked well for me. I, it turns out I'm kind of ahead of schedule in my recovery, which was nice news I got when I just saw the surgeon last time. And so I'll tell you what kinds of things I think were working for me outside of dumb luck that helped me get there. Uh, especially given that it's my right hand. Uh, that, was, that was just such a pleasant surprise. And then of course, last time I had the surgery done on the other hand, it was during COVID. It was just before the Delta wave. Um, then the Delta wave started kicking up while I was recovering. And then this time, of course, we've got Omicron. So I'll tell you what's different now. I'm going to occupational therapy still two days a week. I wish I could do that remotely, but I can't. Although I, I'm pretty sure that quite soon I'm going to lobby to kind of tapered back because I'm pretty good at doing things at home by myself. Anyway, so yeah, let's get into it. So yeah, you'll see I'm wearing my gloves. I'm going to get into those in just a minute. So I'm two months out. This one is about a year out. You can see the main difference. Somebody asked me to show the difference, you know, long-term, short-term post-op. So this thumb is still kind of high in the air. I'm hoping that this will uh, flatten out. I'm I've got to keep in mind that no two thumbs, no two anything are exactly the same. Uh, but I do remember that last year around this point in the recovery, this thumb was kind of standing up too and I was hoping it would flatten out a bit. I like to do yoga, so I was hoping I'd be able to like, you know, spread the hand out and put some weight on it. And I actually am doing a tiny bit of that. I can't like support all my weight on this hand yet, but I, I do believe that that's probably going to flatten out some. I remember that in the strengthening, part of the occupational therapy when we moved from the stretching and mobility onto the strengthening that that's when we worked on that i can't remember exactly what we did so i'm going to keep you posted but i did just have like i said a visit with my surgeon and i just got the okay to move on to the strengthening segment of the occupational therapy so when i go at the end of this week that's what we're going to start working on i'm going to talk to the therapist about this but anyway that is the difference this is quite typical this one's over a year out it i don't remember exactly when it flattened out but i'd say a few months past surgery so i'm only you know eight weeks out right now um, and again i haven't really put weight on it or really put any kind of pressure on it or done any strengthening. If I recall correctly, I also had to strengthen some of the muscles in the back of the hand, sort of like the difference between only strengthening your abs or also strengthening your back to hold the abs up, right? So I'll keep you posted on that, but that's what's different at this point. Um, on a good note, what's different is that I'm doing just about everything with this hand. Yes, some things are hard. Anytime I have to get the thumb and the finger, just this finger opposing each other for something real small or real thin like a shoelace, that's still kind of painful and I'm going to have to talk to my therapist about that. I had said before that for whatever reason, just being immobilized, it kind of made this joint really hurt and that kind of flared up. I did talk to my surgeon about that and he said, you know, if I prevailed upon him, he would inject this with a little steroid, but he preferred I just give it a few more weeks. I'm going to see him in one month. Um, keep working on an occupational therapy and get started on the strengthening portion of the work and see if that doesn't help uh, with this knuckle some. But, you know, right in here, it's kind of sore and I think that's contributing to um, having an issue with that pincer grasp. I am able to cut and chop vegetables. Sometimes that hurts, you know, curling this all the way around the knife. I've got to take it easy. If I don't take it easy, if I do too much, I feel it and it hurts for a while. I definitely find that one of the things that helps is the contrast baths. So cold water, hot water, cold water, hot water. I talked about that maybe a year ago when I did my other side. And the way to do that is to have some ice water in one bowl and that's 30 second dunks. That's about all you can take. And then the hot is about as hot as I can stand it. And that's three minutes at a time. So I start out with hot and I end up with hot, but I alternate those three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold and go back and forth. And I find that really does seem to cut down on the inflammation and give me some really good pain relief that's very long lasting. I'm not having a whole lot of pain, but when I do or at the end of the day or when I've exerted myself too much, that's kind of what I do. 
So some of the things that are really helping me uh, get through this and some of the reason that I think I'm maybe a little ahead of schedule outside of, you know, I'm lucky is that I have been swimming a lot. Now I'm not talking about really, you know, I probably could at this point do freestyle and really pull myself through the water. I didn't start doing that right away. And again, I'm just going to say my usual disclaimer, nothing that I say on this channel should be deemed a substitute for the advice of your own practitioner. I'm not giving any individual medical advice on this channel, but I do recommend that you talk to your surgeon if you've had this surgery and ask when is the soonest you can get it in the water. And if you don't have access to a pool, you know, even a deep bathtub where you just have room to move the arm back and forth and up and down through the water. And I'll tell you why I think that has been so healing. I used a water therapy program years ago to heal a knee. Uh, I'm going to put it down in the description box below. It's called Heal Your Knees, but it was based on a principle that water is very healing. And one of the reasons that the water is very healing is because it provides an infinite amount of um, the gradations in the resistance. So for example, if, let's say you go to a gym and you're lifting weights because you want to uh, work a particular muscle and let's say you're using a five pound weight and now that's too light and so you're going to move up. Now you have to probably go to a seven and a half pound, maybe an eight pound. There's nothing really in between, right? And let's say you've gotten to the 10. Now maybe there's a 12 or a 12 and a half somewhere. Sometimes you have to go right from 10 to 15, which is a 50% increase. That's really huge. So with water, water will push against you just, it'll push back just as hard as you push against it. So it'll only offer the same resistance that it's given. So if you push real hard through water, or if I put on these webbed gloves I have that are, you know, meant for making more resistance and more drag in the water, and I push really hard, it, that feels difficult because the water's pushing just that hard against me. Whereas if I just gently move my hand along, in the water, it's not pushing very hard against me at all. And it allows me to move the joints through a nice range of motion. Uh, now, a hand is not really a weight bearing joint. So unlike with something like a knee, when I rehabilitated my knee, I was able to move the joint through the range of motion without the usual weight on it, which was very, very helpful. But I still find that I can do a little better range of motion in the water than not even with my hands. So I highly recommend asking your practitioner if you can get in the water, when you can get and get in there ASAP, even if it's just to move around a little bit. Uh, I just found that I was very quickly doing more and more and more in the water. Uh, now I'm in the pool every single day and I firmly believe that's why I'm ahead of schedule with my hand because it's just used to doing so much in the water and the more I did in the water, the more I did on land. So that, that difference, like the an analogy I can think of with the water and weight stack, it's kind of like the difference between a gas and an electric stove. Whereas an old fashioned electric stove, it's low, medium, medium, high, high. Whereas with gas, you have those infinite settings. You've got everything in between. And I, I, I feel that that's the way the water works uh, when you're pushing against it and moving through it or dragging uh, through it. And I found that it has been extremely healing. Uh, another thing that's been really helpful for me that I had on when I first started my video, I'm gonna show you is my copper compression gloves. Now I'm gonna put a link down in the description box. You can use an affiliate or not affiliate link. I don't generally do affiliate links on my channel um, because I don't want the room for bias. Uh, that a, a commission would create. Uh, I want to be unbiased, but I happen to be a brand ambassador for copper compression. So use it or don't use it up to you. If you get on their website, uh, you can use the code Sandy20. Um, that would not be an affiliate link if you don't use it through the link that is affiliate that I'm going to give you below. But um, they've generously given us a 20% off code with their brand. I really do like copper compression gloves because they're just the perfect length on the fingers. A lot of these arthritis gloves, compression gloves come up to the next knuckle and it kind of makes it difficult in terms of you're always taking the gloves off and putting them back on and hand washing in between and everything and not that I don't need to use good hand washing especially these days with COVID but this gives me just enough finger space that if I've got clean fingers and I'm picking up food or something I can even wash the tips of my fingers it's just a little less on and off with the gloves they also have just the the right amount of compression I've kind of quit wearing my custom splint anymore after surgery it was just a little too hard a little too restrictive and it was kind of aggravating this knuckle that's already bothering me here at the end of the index finger. Um, these have just enough compression that they, they feel, um, it's just like a nice hug, like a nice squeeze. And they've got some, you know, these traction lines for, you know, so you can grab onto things and it's a little bit grippy. If you put them down on a surface, they're a little bit grippy. They don't tend to slide. So I have been wearing these a fair amount, like most of the time, um, if I'm not in the pool or something like that. And I, I do find them extremely helpful. Now, in terms of occupational therapy, I've gotten the question, what am I doing? Because, you know, masks, COVID, Omicron, it seems like we're all giving up mitigation just as fast as we can. So 
Um, yeah, I do go in there and sometimes there's somebody huffing and puffing away on a treadmill because they're in physical therapy. I'm in occupational therapy, which is the hands, and we have our own little section of the room. But it's one big room and it's aerosols and people are huffing and puffing on the treadmill and they've got the mask down under the nose and I can only do so much. I do provide feedback. Sometimes there's a survey that pops up in my email. I wish they were strict about the mask policy, but let's face it, what kinds of masks are most people like that wearing anyway? So um, my godsend for things like high-risk situations have been in the ready masks. I tend to use this ready mask. This it's actually when I originally reviewed this mask, I had it upside down. It doesn't matter all that much. The writing actually goes upside down at the bottom. Um, I I use one of these when I go in the door, right before I get there, obviously, I put it on. These are very easy to fit check. I will link my review to these. I'll have it down in the description box or I'll try to link it up here. Um, they're very, very easy to fit test because any leak at all you feel as some cold air right where it's coming from. On top of this, I put a plain old surgical mask and I tend to use the armrest just because, I, I don't know, I feel like it provides me, it doesn't give any more protection, but it protects this surface a little bit. And really, it just doesn't look so weird because these get some weird looks. And it just that looks like I'm wearing a plain old surgical mask. Sometimes somebody sees the border of this sticking out, but I don't think anybody pays much attention to it. Um, I, I have decided that, you know, it's kind of everyone for himself right now. And so what mitigation measures I can use, uh, the N95. I think the N95 is king. That's going to provide me the best uh, protection that I can have anywhere I go. Some places I have a choice about, some I don't. But if I want to start living anymore these days, it looks like I'm on my own. And so I'm, I'm starting to think in terms of, can I do this? Well, can I wear an N95 doing that? Um, now, if it's still really crowded or something, the infection rate's very high right now, I'm probably going to shy away from it, but um, it's all about whether I can wear an N95. That's just the reality right now, guys, for me anyway. So let me know what you're doing. Yeah, so anyway, those are the biggies, the copper compression gloves, swimming, water and more water, hot, cold contrast, baths for the hand, and your ready mask or at least some other N95 if you're going to occupational therapy these days, guys. So let me know how you're all doing. I really appreciate hearing from some of you guys and where you're at in this process. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.